Welcome back to Podiatry Marketing. I'm your host, Jim McDonald. Joined as always is by my trusty co-host, Tyson Franklin. Tyson, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm fantastic today. Big Jim, how are you doing? Ah, oh, doing well, doing well. Uh, life is good in here uh, in Eugene, Oregon. Uh, turn, turn it, you know, the fall time is, is quite nice uh, in the Northwest. Ah, oh, well, yeah, well, we're heading into our summer. So I just, <laughs> I love this. Well, I, do, I like the cooler months, but I love the warm months back in the pool. Swimming, getting a bit, yeah, a bit of vitamin D, a few UV rays, and uh, but not too many. Yeah, you know, I want to keep my my youthful exuberance, youthful appearance. Yeah, I got to yeah. put on some of that SPF. Huh? Yeah, it's a shame it doesn't. If you go in the sun, it doesn't make your hair dark. It would be nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> those days are over. Ah, uh, those days are oh well over. So okay, let's get on to today's subject, which is oh, I'm going to talk about discounting. And I don't know if I, I came up with a fancy title for, for this one or not. Let me give it some thought. Uh, what have we got here? Yeah, here, okay. Here's the title for today. Why discounting is a poor marketing strategy. It's a terrible marketing strategy. And, and I know discounting, it, it's a personal decision, and it comes back to the type of podiatry business you want to have. But to be perfectly honest, I would not see a health care provider who use discounting as part of their marketing to attract new patients. I would think you must have not a good opinion of yourself to want to give a discount to a new patient just to get them into your business. Yeah, it's kind of like the lowest common denominator. It's kind of a race to the bottom when you start dropping prices, right? It's going to have uh, kind of multiple knockdown effects that you may not be uh, totally ready for. I'm sure you're going to get into some of those today. Yeah, well, the part that I find funny about it, if I see somebody I haven't, used, I haven't used before a service and I see them discounting, I'm thinking, okay, it's great that they're discounting. It might be a good deal. But I, I, I try and see it from what is your service really worth then? If a normal consultation is worth you know, $200 or $150, but you're prepared to do it for you know, $90, I'm thinking, well, is your service really only worth $90? Are you just saying it's worth $150 or $200? And I don't know, I just think in the healthcare industry, you should just know these are what our prices are. Now, if you want to do special deals or incentives for patients after they've become a new patient, I don't have a problem with that, especially if, if someone gets a pair of orthotics and you want to do an incentive to get a second pair. To me, that's totally different. But to use discounting just to get person into your practice I just don't think it looks very professional. Yeah, you're kind of getting those kind of t tire kickers and the kind of the people that want the, the deepest discounts on everything. So uh, it's going to affect the kind of patients coming into your practice for sure. Yeah, and I think, well, can you imagine an orthopedic surgeon go, hey, bring your knees into me, 50% off in the month of July. You'd be going, really? 50% discount on you know, knee replacements, fantastic. But you'd be wondering what corners is he cutting to be fifty to take fifty percent off? I'm only going to get half a knee replacement. I'm getting a full knee replacement. So I don't know. I just, I just think, and I, I like. I know people do it, and but I think if it's also if you get patients coming into your clinic asking for discounts, because that's another thing. Sometimes people give to discounts because people come in and ask for it. And if that's the case, I think it's a reflection on your marketing. What's the message you're putting out there if you're constantly getting people asking for a discount? Because I know in my clinic, you get the occasional person asked, but oh, they were few and far between. Absolutely. It, it, it sets a precedent, right? It kind of like it puts the bar at the type of patients coming come to, come to the practice and kind of where their expectations are at. Yeah, and especially if they're asking for a discount um, before they even know what your price is. They'll ring up and go, oh, do you give uh, pensioner discounts? Do you have seniors discounts? Or, yeah, I'm unemployed or I'm a student. Yeah, do you have a discount? Yeah, you haven't even told them what your fee was yet, but they already want a discount. And, the, yeah, so you've got your, your seniors, you've got your pensioners, you've got your low-income earners, uh, unemployed people, students, and also the person that I class as the tight ass, the guppy. The person that just doesn't want to part with their money. And they've got plenty of it. They just don't want to part with it. They're, and they they can cause more headaches than anything else. No, absolutely. I think 
like you mentioned, they're not expecting like a premium service. They're just kind of there, kind of picking apart, trying to get the lowest price possible. And sometimes those people are harder to deal with uh, than others. Yeah, and I've got a I've got a story of a dumb podiatrist uh, that I knew who had a had a clinic set up on the Sunshine Coast, and I remember them setting the clinic up, and they got in contact with me one day, and they said, "Hey, Tyson, we can't pay our bills. We're actually losing money every month." And I remember when they were setting up the clinic, I said, to them, "Here's a list of things to do. Here's a list of things not to do." And at one point, I had to actually ask them, out of curiosity, "Did you get the list mixed up?" Because everything I told you not to do, you've done. And everything I told you to do, you didn't do. And they're going, oh, yeah, well, yeah, we just thought you know, that we'd do this. So they just thought they knew better. Then when I had a look at their patients and what they were charging, I went through all their patients with them. And it was something like 90% of their patients were getting some form of discount. They were being bulk billed. There was a discount. Only about 10% were actually paying full price for, for a visit. So I went through everything. I said, I've already worked out that if you stopped doing all that, it's going to add an extra ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 a month to your bottom line. And they went, oh, seriously? I went, yeah, seriously. And I went through it all because they were, they were a pretty busy clinic. They did that. They listened to me for three months. And for three months, the figures went up by about ten or 15000 And then they stopped. They, they slowly went back about six months later, back into their old habits. Until eventually, uh, they just shut up shop and walked away. Overnight, wow. they pretty much just closed the clinic and, and shot through, did a runner. And, and the reason I know this, because it cost them about, oh, it was over 220 grand they spent setting the clinic up. So I knew they'd done a runner. So I rang the receivers and said, uh, hey, I'll buy, I'll buy the clinic for 30 grand. Okay. And they went, I said, because you're not going to get it. You're not going to get the money back trying to sell all this equipment anywhere. And you're not gonna, you can't sell the fit out. I said, I'll take over the whole clinic for 30 grand. And they went, yeah, okay. So I went in there, I bought it. And I tell you, geez, it was hard work building it back up because they had run things so poorly. But probably at six months, we got it back up to being a profitable business again. And, but yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's what happens. This is what people don't realize that when you get into that discount mentality and you do it once, if you can do it for the initial visit, then you'll, they'll expect it on subsequent visits and they'll expect it on other things. But then they'll tell all the discount-minded friends, hey, you should go and see these people because they don't charge full price. And it just, it just spirals out of control. Yeah, that's not good. Like, uh, it's just going to be downhill from there once, once you kind of like, you don't get the revenue kind of coming to the practice. It just has massive trickle-down effects on not only uh, attracting the wrong patients, but then if you can't pay the bills and keep the lights on, then it's a totally different situation. Yeah, and that, that's a part of the thing. That, and this is why people need to know the numbers and, and how it actually affects your bottom line. So an example I have, if, if you have a, a consultation that's, say, $100, and say it costs, out of the $100, it costs $70 to actually run your clinic. You might have staff wages and overheads, electricity, yeah, fixed and variable costs. It costs 70 bucks to run it. So you get to keep 30 $30 over there. So it's 30%. That's not too bad. A patient might say, oh, can I just have it? I just want a 10% discount. That's all I want. Just a 10% discount, you, you, you lousy mongrel. Give me 10%. And you go, okay. So you take $10 off. And now your revenue for that consultation is only $90. And they're thinking, yeah, you've only lost $10. But it still costs $70 to run the clinic for, for uh, yeah, over that period of time, which leaves you $20. But so a 10% discount to the patient realistically is a 33% discount to you as the owner. So every time patients are saying to you, hey, can you give me a 10% discount? Just realize it's a 33% discount that you're losing in your pay if you do that for, for enough people. And if you're turning over a lot of money, that's a lot of money that you're letting go for, for what reason? Yeah, like you said, you really have to know the numbers. You have to know how to impact your revenue, not just the the price that the patient is paying, but you know what you're receiving in revenue is uh, is huge. So yeah, I think that's a that's a great point. Yeah, I remember these uh, this old couple who used to see my husband and wife, and they were they were journalists, and they'll be dead now, so I can talk about them. And they, I don't think they listen to the podcast. So anyway, they, they were journalists. 
they had made really good money their whole life, but they were now living in like this government funded retirement place, which pretty much in this like little shack amongst all these other little shacks. I don't think it's there now. I think they've torn it down and it was a bit of an eyesore. But I remember them coming in to see me and they both come in at the same time. They go, oh, come on, Tyson, can you give us a discount? We both come in at the same time. And I went, no. And they said, well, why, why won't you give us a discount? Can you give us a, if you can't, you give us a good reason why you can't give us a discount. I said, well, it's really simple. I said, uh, you're both journalists. They went, yes. Did you both work for one of the main newspapers in Australia? Yeah. Traveled the world, seen everything. They went, yeah. So you piss your money against the wall like there's, yeah, you didn't have any kids. I said, you didn't have to put anyone, you didn't have to educate anyone. You put them through university. You've used all that money. You both earned really good money and you pissed it against the wall for 40 or 50 years. And you, now you expect me to give you a discount because you pissed your money against the wall. And if I do that and I do that for enough people, I don't want to have to go to my podiatrist in the future and harass him about getting a discount. I said, so I refuse to give you one. And he just went, fair enough. So they, they kept coming back. They still, they still came in. I just said no, told them why. And I may have been a bit politer to them when I said it. But sure. in my head, this was what I was telling myself. They lived a really good life. They had great incomes. They traveled the world. They got a million experiences. And they pissed the money against the wall. And I'm thinking... So it shouldn't be my responsibility now to have to look after you or take money out of, away from my family because you decided to have a good time 20 years ago. Yeah, I want to have a good time in 20 years, so, so I need the money. Absolutely. I, mean, it's, I guess one way to look at it too is that they're both journalists. Maybe they work for the same publication. Did they give the publication a good deal because both their, you know, publication was paying both of their salaries or both of their, uh, you know, I know it doesn't always work like that. Sometimes people are freelance and stuff, but uh but yeah, it's like, you know, would you take a discount if you both worked at the same publication? Absolutely not, right? They want to get paid full wages, just like you want to get paid a full wage. Yeah, and especially, like, I've had receptionists come up and go, oh, come on, yeah, I think you should give, you know, Martha and Mabel a discount when they come in. They're regular, they're pensioners, you know, they're doing it really tough. And I'm thinking, yeah, when they're not at the pokies, yeah, <laughs> you know, the one -arm, the one arm bandits right. <laughs> sinking beer at the casino. I've seen them there. I know what they're like. But, but I'd say the reception, okay, that's fine. Well, when they come in, I'll give them a discount. If, uh, if you're prepared to, instead of pay, get me paying you $30 an hour, you only take $20 an hour while they're here. Sure. Receptionists never put the hand up and go, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want, I want my wages dropped as well. And then here, and then, cause they don't realize that, that it, yeah, for every $10 you don't accept from the patient because you just go, oh no, I'll give you a discount. It's $10 that should be in your bank account. It's $10 yeah. that is going towards your, your family and your lifestyle and your future and your retirement. It it all adds up. And I know people that are, you know, like I'm 58 now and I'm extremely comfortable with where I am financially because I chose to set my clinic up a certain way, charge accordingly, not give out discounts. Except I would do deals for patients. Once they became a, a reliable, trusted patient, I would do other things for them. True. But initially, I just don't think it's a good, a good plan. Totally agree. And I know podiatrists that are my age who, um, yeah, I'm almost at the front of their clinic with a little tin cup, rattling it, trying to get people to put coins in it. And when, and when I look at those people I, and I remember their clinics and I remember what they used to look like, and I remember their marketing used to all be about discounts and bulk billing and doing all that. And I look at them 20, 30 years ahead and I've gone, they're going to be asking for discounts themselves in the future because they, they just haven't. I think sometimes when, if you get in that discount mentality, it, it sort of, I don't know, it like transfers onto you and your, your whole life becomes like this, like discounted. You don't, you don't enjoy life. Instead of enjoying life, you, you enjoy a discounted version of it. Okay. You're clipping coupons and you're asking everybody else for a discount. Yeah, and no, people will be listening to this to just thinking, Tyson, you you're just mean. But <laughs> I think if you if you listen to me talk about this and you're thinking I'm just mean and nasty, then then I'm mean and nasty. But I'm sure there's other people listening to this. <laughs> I'm sure there's other people listening to this that go, 
yeah, no, you're right. I shouldn't be giving discounts. Or maybe I'm, maybe I'm not saying don't do it. If you want to do it for someone, like I'd give my mum a discount. Yeah, I'm not hard. I'm not that. I'm not heartless. Uh, in fact, I wouldn't charge my mum. See, that's how much of a nice guy I am. You're fantastic. Yeah, what can I say? Yeah, and if I like, if I had close friends and yeah, you know, I have friends that I've known for years and can't, and they come to me and say, "Hey, Tyson, can you do this?" If I knew they weren't in a health fund and it wasn't, I'd say, Look, "Just just pay me what it's going to cost me to do this, plus a bottle of rum." <laughs> so we would, I would do things like that for people. So it wasn't that you were totally heartless. It's just a complete stranger in the street coming to me wanting a discount. I go, I don't know you. How do I know that you're not loaded or you're about to come from my clinic and go to the casino, which I had seen people do? He said that they didn't have any money. The last point I want to make on this is don't get into price wars with discounting podiatrists. So if another person moves into your area, or you might set up in the area, and when you set up, all of a sudden you hear about the podiatrist down the road and they've dropped the prices because they want to be the cheapest podiatrist in town. I'm thinking, let them. Because I always say, someone's going to be the most expensive, it may as well be you. And don't you set up a clinic somewhere and drop your prices just to try and get patients. Because if everybody gets on that, that spiral down of, of dropping the prices to try and attract patients, and what, there's a quote that's all, yeah, getting a price war with an idiot results in two idiots. So it's just crazy. And then I think it was in the 80s in Australia, they had the beer wars. Did you have beer wars in America or Canada? I don't remember hearing about that, no. Beer wars. Uh, there, was, there was a, in Queensland, it was like the main company was Forex. And I can't remember the exact story, but all of a sudden, they went on strike for whatever reason, but then all these other beer companies from other states started coming into Queensland. But then became these beer wars where everyone was just dropping their prices to try and capture the market because our main Queensland beer wasn't there. And But the only person that won in the end was the consumer. The people consuming the beer were absolutely loving it. Prices right. just, just came down that much. And even to this day, when... When I see the price of a carton of beer, and they and a lot of them are still discounting at different times, I think the consumer is still winning out in the end. They could double the price of beer, and people will still consume it. They're not going to go, "Oh, am I going to pay a hundred dollars for a carton of beer?" Yep, Australians will. <laughs> I'd probably say though, like you know, the podiatrists get into this kind of co competition. I think that the patients actually don't benefit because what happens is that. You get to spend less time. You have to see more patients in order to kind of make your make ends meet. Yeah. So uh, while while the price might be great for the, for the for the patient, uh, they might like to have it, you know, a discounted price. They're not going to appreciate that discounted service, or they don't expect a discounted quality of service or level of service, right? So, uh, but you know, in order to you know, podi most podiatry clinics these days are businesses, right? So you have to make ends meet and. Uh, that got a general revenue somehow are going to shut down. Yeah, I think that that is a spectacular point to finish on too, because it is you you can't keep dropping your prices without it affecting how the rest of your business is run. And if you've got certain overheads, you've got a lifestyle that you've become accustomed to, and you want to maintain that, you have to cut corners somewhere. So you could yeah, it could be the time you spend with the patient, it could be quality of uh, equipment or materials that you're buying are you going to buy something cheaper because you know it'll save you money so I, I don't think there's any real benefits that that come from it totally agree okay big jim that is me done, done and dusted for discounting i think everyone would agree now i've listened to this if you have been discounting they will not be doing it anymore <laughs> uh, or if they do that time they to go do, cold turkey go, cold turkey just yeah it's it just Rip the Band-Aid off. Stop discounting and just charge everybody full price. And you know, there'll be a few podiatrists go, oh, 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 they'll be, be losing sleep. They'll sweat. So, sounds good, Tyson. Okay, Jim, I will talk to you next week. Bye now. Okay, bye. <laughs>